So I just caught wind that yesterday, Lou Elizondo's lawyer, Daniel Sheehan, stated on the radio program or podcast, The Other Side of Midnight, that Lou Elizondo is the principal advisor to the United States Space Command on UAP. Let's take a listen to that clip. Lou Elizondo, whom I represent, uh, is in fact the principal advisor on UFOs to the U.S. Space Command. For a quick synopsis of what the Space Command is, I went to their website and to their frequently asked questions and found this question and answer helpful. What is U.S. Space Command responsible for? U.S. Space Command's area of responsibility is surrounding the Earth at an altitude greater than 62 miles or 100 kilometers above average sea level. Space is no longer a sanctuary. Technological advances, changes in strategic guidance, and new security challenges require U.S. Space Command to innovate and adapt to ensure that space warfighters are prepared to accomplish future missions in, from, and to space. Interestingly, Journalist Christopher Sharp of Liberation Times has said multiple times that he assesses that the AOIMSG office is most appropriately placed within the Space Force, which is part of the Space Command. Let's go over some tweets he had on May 13th, 2022. To be clear, hearings are going to take place next week. Congress has seen the videos and data. They are being briefed by a variety of personnel not just Lou. They have spoken to the witnesses, many trained observers. If there's nothing to hide, why is OUSD Office Under Secretary of Defense stalling? Lehman Charlie responds, what could be some of the reasons for stalling? Christopher responds, it's an oversight, not operational office, and is ill-equipped to perform the mission as legislated by Congress. But for some reason, someone has obviously been insistent that AOIMSG be placed there when in fact it belongs with Space Force, in my opinion. So I agree with Christopher. The AOIMSG office, which is the UAP study program, should not be placed in an oversight office that lacks infrastructure to fulfill the intent of Congress to properly study and investigate UAP. It should be placed somewhere else. And Chris thinks that the Space Force is the ideal place to position this effort. And that makes a lot of sense to me because the Space Force has the sensors, has the infrastructure that would facilitate fulfilling the intent of Congress and the will of the people. In a recent episode, I shared with you what Luis Elizondo stated on the show, The Unexplained with Howard Hughes, referencing what he anticipates NASA is going to announce soon. Let's review the exact quote because it may tie in to the reported involvement of Elizondo with the U.S. Space Command. So on the Howard Hughes show, Elizondo said, you did not hear this from me, but I think there may be some interesting announcements coming from NASA in the very new f- near future regarding this topic that may be very promising for a lot of people. Howard Hughes responds. And when you say some interesting announcements, just give me a clue. What do you think? Elizondo responds. Maybe dedicating some more resources and time and attention in a more formal and official capacity. And of course, he's referencing within regards to UAP. Well, I think I'm just going to leave that there for the most part in the coming days, weeks, and even months. I assess that we will learn more about Elizondo's involvement with the U.S. Space Command, assuming what Sheehan said was true, which I think it likely is. He would know. He's in in direct contact with Elizondo. The fact that Elizondo is reportedly the principal advisor to the U.S. Space Command on UFOs is, well, a big deal. And if it's true, it really underscores that you probably should take Elizondo seriously, contrary to somewhat, contrary to what some of the naysayers try to establish about him, which I don't think is going to be very successful. And furthermore, 
if we do get some future announcements from NASA on their involvement with the scientific study and investigation of UAP, there's really only one word to capture the weight of that, and that's profound, profundity. So a lot of things are in the works. And as I said in my last video, the way I see it, this is not the beginning of the beginning. More accurately, this is the beginning of the end. I do think, although I could be completely wrong, that our collective perspective and assessment of UAP academically, scientifically, culturally, legislatively, governmentally, philosophically, is going to change on a scale encapsulating eight billion human beings. And it's my honor to go on this trek with you and watch it all unfold. Or alternatively, it's my honor to think that's what's happening, to be proven wrong, and therefore to have a conclusion which has its own value, even if, it's the, even if I have to accept that my analysis of this whole thing was completely off. Oh, big deal, I'll live but at least we got the answer, right? It was just a bunch of people indulging in a mind virus, a lot of circumstantial evidence, a lot of pilots and 70 years of witnesses coming forward and corroborated UFO events, and it meant nothing but, but, but satellites and airplanes, meteorites, and swamp gas. Well, we'll see. We shall see, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, to, to end this video, I will alert you that I will be on Coast to Coast AM this evening from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, or to put it differently, the last two hours of the program. It will be a panel. Joe Merja and Danny Silva will be on that panel with me, and the host will be George Knapp. We will be discussing the hearings and adjacent topics, and that's a great honor, and I look forward to engaging that. And uh, how cool that I am also getting a video published today. That's that's cool for me, even though it's not a big deal, but for me it's cool. Maybe I'm easily impressed. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyways, you know what I'm about to say, and I'm going to go ahead and say it. Please do not forget to subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, and you'd like to support me in other capacities, you could become a, a patron, you become a YouTube member, you could uh, buy a t-shirt, for example, or you could even just give me a one-time donation. All the links are in the description below, or you could just slap a like on this bad boy, and I'll appreciate it so much. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and if you've gotten to this point, if you've gotten to this point, I want you to put into the description, open. I'll see you in the next episode. Special thanks to all patrons, YouTube members, those that have bought merch, those that have given me one-time donation. I couldn't do without you. Thank you so much. See you in the next episode.